want to know what the movers and shakers of New Hampshire's performing arts are thinking? Welcome to New Hampshire Unscripted with your host, Ray Dudley. I should not be touching things. I should not be touching things. <laughs> so I, I don't want to like drag it on for you here, but I, I thought it would make a really good subject. For, yeah, you know, a, a podcast, and yeah. um, I'm working with KXL to um, okay <laughs> to do some podcasting from their studios down there in Concord. Oh, good. good. And this would have been a great one to do, but since it's coming up this weekend, I thought, yeah. well, so much for that. You well, know, if you want to put this out before the uh, before Saturday, um, I don't know how you would do that if you're. Well, I guess the the actors are. I had asked the actors to um, put aside 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., but none of the actors are going to actually be rehearsed uh, every night mm. during the week. But none of the actors are actually going to be rehearsing those four hours. There'll be about an hour and 45 minutes of that time period. We're already into the thing, the topic. Hang on here. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on here. Sorry. All right. So let's start with, give me the name of what it is, yep. this production. It's called the Seven Day Plays. Seven Day, Seven Day. All right. Yep. Seven days. And why? What? What? And it's just to be clear for the viewers. It's not a play that lasts seven days. It's a um, the play is just a one matinee performance of four short plays that are created in seven days from start to finish, like the writing, the rehearsing, and then the the tech, and then putting it on. And the reason that I wanted to start this was because there is a very popular contest called the 24-Hour Plays, which I think is the copyrighted name. So some people do it as the day, the play in the day, which is the same thing, but you have 24 hours to do everything. So you have 24 hours to write, rehearse, and put on in front of an audience a short play. And I had participated in a few of them as an actor, and in the last one that I participated in, I participated in as a writer, which is I had never written a play before that had been that would be put on. And I, you know, to me, that was a really cool experience. Just thinking about just writing something on paper and then seeing it brought to life in a short amount of time right after that. And of course, since it was a 24 hour play it's going to be a little rough around the edges when you put it on because mm -hmm. everyone's learning the lines and the blocking and making decisions all this like in one day. But even with that, it didn't matter. Cause when I saw the play, I just thought it was, I, any of the rough edges just were insignificant to me because I was watching it being brought to life and very skillfully. So, and so I figured if you could do that in a day, then if you do, then doing it in seven days, will give people a chance to sleep to think a little bit more, to rehearse a little bit more, to, to just pol just polish the rough edges a little bit more. And uh, so for the audience, it would be more polished and uh, even more enjoyable. So so that was the basic idea. It wasn't the whole um, do a play really quickly thing. It had already been done for years. Mm -hmm. I just thought, why not do it in a week if you have the opportunity Instead of, a, instead of a really, really short period of time. And I understand the logic behind doing it a short period of time is to, is to see how, how much you can do in that short period of time. So I think it's, it, there's, it's the same kind of curiosity and the same kind of spirit of that, but it, just, it, it allows it to be a little bit more polished mm -hmm. so that when the audience goes to see it, they're having an even better time. I'm assuming the audience is fairly forgiving in the end result, right? I mean, the end result for the 24-hour plays, yes. Yeah. And uh, I assume this one would be forgiving on a certain level, too. I would hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the less you have to ask the audience for forgiveness, the mm. better. So it it has to be a pretty, pretty uh, not major undertaking, but, you know, to, to put up, there's a lot of moving pieces here. Yep. And so, well, before we get into that, give um, anybody who may eventually listen or watch this, give them an idea of what's taking place, like uh, the progression of things right. that will happen. 
So the basic schedule that we're going to be abiding by is um, we're going to start it at Saturday. The official kickoff will be Saturday at 2 p.m. Because the show is going to be the following Saturday at 2 p.m. So we want that exact 24 hours. Uh, however, we're going to have an orientation at noontime before uh, at noontime on Saturday. So mm-hmm. a couple hours before the kickoff. And in the orientation, we're going to gather the writers, primarily the writers and the authors, the playwrights, the people who have volunteered to be actors and playwrights. And the directors have the option of coming but it won't be necessary for them to come. because It's going to be mainly the authors and the playwrights. And what we're going to do is I'm going to explain how it's going to work, and then we're going to give prompts to the writers. And I'm not going to reveal what those prompts are yet in this okay. interview, especially since you're involved. <laughs> but we'll, we'll be giving a few prompts to the writers, and after that, the writers and the actors are going to get together and do interviews with each other so that the writers maybe can draw inspiration from the actors or get their get what the act if the actors have any preferences or special skills or anything that they might want to, or special like whatever they might need for the uh playwrights might keep in mind when they're writing and the actors can ask the playwrights um for anything that they might feel like they might want to do in the show and see mm-hmm. and you know just give information to the playwright basically about who they are as an actor and as a person and anything they want to talk about. Is there a theme? Uh, there is the different plays there, together. There will be, how can I put this? So Walk I'm, carefully, I'm, brother. Anything. Walk carefully. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. There will be one element okay. that ties them together. Okay. Which I, yeah. Which I'm not going to say anything more about. That's okay. But, I get it. Yes. There will be an element that ties them together. And so then and, it, you know, once the interviews start with the actors and the writers, I'm basically going to be done explaining everything. They're going to be, and the, the writers can leave whenever they want to start writing. So they might have a little more than the time allotted to them. If they, you know, if they have, if they feel like they can start writing early, they can do so. They will have 24 hours to write a short 20 to 25 minute play from that point on. Mm-hmm. So from Saturday 2 p.m. to Sunday 2 p.m., they'll have that time. So the the shows will be due in, the scripts will be due in Sunday at 2 p.m. Then the scripts will be given to the directors, and the directors will decide amongst themselves which ones they want to direct. You know, and hopefully there won't be too much fighting. I don't think so because we're uh, we're separating them. Uh, we're separating the directors. There's two veteran directors and there's two first time directors. And the veteran directors are directing scripts from the first-time playwrights. And the first-time directors are directing scripts from the veteran playwrights. Oh, so we have two veterans, playwrights, and two first-time uh, playwrights. Interesting. So there's kind of cross So there's not going to be a lot of selections to choose from. You'll have, you know, each director will have one of two to choose from, and they can decide for themselves. After that, we're going to have the rest of the Sunday night not doing anything. The directors can go over what they need to go over to prep. Um, the actors can read the scripts, you know, on their own time. And then beginning on Monday evening, we'll have rehearsals. Uh, it'll be Monday through Friday. You know, some directors are going to have, are, can choose, directors can each choose one dark, one dark evening if they, if they feel they can. So they'll rehearse throughout the week and they'll be, you know, they'll have to have, certain days by certain days they'll have to have certain things decided like props and costumes um and things of that nature so that we can go and acquire whatever that they don't already have amongst themselves and then another day they'll need to have all the tech requirements like any sound files or lighting things that we're going to do in the tech booth and then just going to rehearse throughout the week and each each team will have an hour and 45 minutes to rehearse their 20 to 25 minute play uh, every day. So every day they'll have an hour and 45 minutes. So that's Monday through Friday. And then Saturday morning is when we're going to do our tech runs. And each team is going to have an hour on the stage to tech their play. Mm -hmm. Again, these are short plays. So there's possible they could get a couple of runs in there in that one hour, you know, in Q to Qs. And then we'll break for lunch around noon. Uh, and then actors will be called back 
uh, around 1.30 when the house opens. And then at 2 p.m. is when we start the show. And then, you know, there's not going to be a lot of cleanup afterwards because there's going to be no set on stage. It's just going to be the set pieces like chairs and maybe some blocks that are made up to look like beds or couch or a couch, you know. And so there's not going to be like a full set on stage. So that is the basic plan of what's going to happen that week. Um, is there any type of adjudication? What What's the end result of the... Saturday yeah. evening, just everyone's just happy they did it, or is there something yeah, and, well, formal? The end result happening? is just to put on that performance and to give the opportunity for those first time elements to produce their work in front of an audience. And so we'll have an audience, and uh, it'll just the the it'll just be that one matinee performance, and then everyone can go on their way having had uh, an experience, and we'll see we'll see you know what becomes of it. Do you think the the largest do you think the writers will pull the most will get the most from it is that the point the point or do you it, I, mean, I think well what inspired me to to do this was the, from the writing perspective but i'm hoping the directors too because the the uh the the first time directors that we have they're people who have been itching to direct they just haven't yet and the first time writers that we have are have done directing acting like they're very ensconced in the theater community they just haven't done the writing part yet so it's not like we're picking people off the street to you know <laughs> and say hey you want to write a play you're not going down to dunkin donuts and just randomly right. grabbing people right no good to know we may be going down to dunkin donuts for food during the show but not for that <laughs> yeah so so what i'm hoping will happen is everyone will learn a little the for the for the experienced people working on this you got that time crunch challenge so it's the challenge of doing everything in a shorter amount of time and also the challenge of directing work that you haven't chosen with actors you haven't chosen that's another challenge and i think the two veteran directors we have are, are up for that challenge um because i was really carefully thinking about those four positions or those eight positions i should say uh when i was asking around who would like to do that i was really careful to ask people that that would fit with this mm -hmm. that i believe will fit with this so i'm hoping that we're actually going to produce and i and i have a positive feeling that we're going to produce not just a good learning experience but an actual quality short plays i i have a good feeling about that so do you want to talk about people you've invited? Do you want to name names? I don't want to single anyone out because it's like a it's there's a lot of people involved in this and mm -hmm. I I kind of don't want to single anybody out in the interview other than to say that every I mean do you want to list everybody that's involved? I mean I don't I don't got really, quite a it's a yeah. it's a wonderful list. I mean it is a great list. Hold on, let me see if I can uh, If you don't want to reveal things No, no, I will. I I'm going to list everybody though. If, like you said, if I'm going to name one person, I'm going to name everybody. I'm willing to put them all out there. So uh, there are actors, directors, there are actors, directors, writers, writers, and a production team. Is that, does each yes. group have a product, their own production team as well? Nope. So um, one production team. They have their team. own stage manager because the way that we're conducting rehearsals is that, um, the way that we're conducting rehearsals is we're doing two rehearsals simultaneously and one slot. And then another two simul uh, rehearsals simultaneously in another slot. There's a rehearsal space at a uh, retirement home that we're using that Hatbox has been in agreement with them for being able to use their space. And it's a big space. So there's enough for two rehearsals. Uh, because we're going to be doing two shows each at the same time, we do have two different stage managers. Okay. So we have an assistant stage manager and a main stage manager and the assistant stage manager is going to work with two of the plays uh during rehearsals taking notes filing rehearsal reports things of that nature and uh and then the main stage manager is going to be working with the others so i'm going to look at my list here okay so our stage manager is also happens to be my wife, Meredith Campagna, which I get to say her last name as Campagna for the first time, which is awesome. Breaking and new ground here. This is great. I know. Our uh, tech director is Greg Parker, who's going to be 
who's going to be doing the uh, the Tech Saturday Morning. He's also one of the writers, actually. Okay. Uh, we needed to have, we, a writer had to step out because uh, of travel complications. And so we were kind of wondering who else could fill that writer's shoes. And Greg stepped in. So we're excited about that. Basically, Greg has to show up on Saturday. And then he'll go home and write a play. Well, will have 24 hours to write a play, turn it in. And then the next Saturday, he'll be teching his own show. But he won't be directing or anything. So <laughs> that'll be interesting. And so we have Greg Parker. Um for assistant stage manager, we have uh, uh, Sandra Avalani, who is super focused, super hardworking. I met her during the forty-eight hour film, pro- one of the forty-eight hour film projects. Yeah, uh, the one that actually that you couldn't do, or that you know, for we reasons- had to put that out there. Uh, you can edit. You can. You have editing power on this, right? <laughs> I've been trying to help you for all the ones you invited. <laughs> the one I turned you down on. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you can edit this whole part out if you want. Huh. No, but she's super focused. Uh, I met her during that that forty eight hour film project, and I worked with her another time as a co actor. She's learning acting too. She's like everything. She's learning everything on really getting into the theater scene. Uh, and she did stage manage a show for Ro Gavin uh, recently. And I don't know. She's probably done a billion other things too. But anyway, she's really good. And then for the the veteran directors, we have Brian. Brian Halpern, you know, uh, and Kelsey Domini. You, you've worked with both of them. I have. And the first time uh, directors is uh, are uh, Mar- Mary Fraser. I don't know if you're familiar I with her. She does a lot of stuff for the Hat Box, and uh, she's very experienced as an actress um, in other theatrical things. And um, and Laura Hoagland's the same way. So Laura Hoagland is the other first time director. They both expressed interest in in directing for the first time and uh, are feeling various things about it right now. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, There is, so for our veteran playwrights, we have uh, Gary Locke um, and, uh, and Greg, uh, as I mentioned before. And then for our first time playwrights, uh, Peter Josephson. um, Really? Yep. Yep. He's going to try his hand at playwriting and Carrie L. uh, Silk. She's going to be a first time playwright. Yeah. Deep bench. Deep bench. Well, yeah, she has a, uh, um, she's also bringing her son, who's about, I don't know, he's less than a year old now, but if anybody is a behavior problem, um, Scion is her son, uh, Scion's just going to take over that role, whatever it is. Uh, so we're hoping to okay. inculcate him into theater really early. Let's see here. Did I use the word I inculcate? I've read it, but I don't know if that's a real word. I mean, I don't know if I pronounced it right. <laughs> sounded good. Okay. Sounded good to me. And so for um, actors, we have uh, Deirdre Bridge, we have you, Ian Allen, uh, Jen Schaffner, Melanie Rodrigue, we have Dwight Stearns, Chris Savage, Amy Agostino, Deborah Lund, and Ryan Clark. Wow. They're like some of the favorite actors. They're all like one of my favorite actors that I've worked with before. That's incredible. So did I any think- of the, when you put out your interview, did it, your, um, your invitation to anybody was anybody that couldn't do it because that's yeah, an there, incredible list yeah it is there's a few people that couldn't do it i tried to get people as early as possible and then and then the people that i got earlier were the more yesers because there's time before yeah. anything is committed uh gets commitment and then there's and then i just started thinking of more people that i wanted to do it and i'm like i get to stop because i don't want to overcrowd this thing you know yeah yeah. Um, like, you know, there's a couple people in my improv troupe that I wanted to ask that I never got a chance to ask. Uh, there's a couple of, and there's like all, there's too many people. So, but I think I can say this now. We are accepted for next year as well. Seriously? So, yeah. So anyone who, who couldn't do it this year, I'm going to ask for next year. So I just didn't want to overload the cast with like yeah. all these people. <laughs> I don't know how you would assume how many you need anyway. I mean, how do you even pick that number? We want to, we want to keep the plays as simple as possible. So four person max in a, you know, in a single play, mm-hmm. the forecast max. And right now we've worked out the numbers so that we'll have two plays that are two cast members we have one play that's three cast members and one play that's four cast members. And it's there's we'll figure out who's what at orientation and I have a fun way of doing that, but I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got you, got you. That's interesting that you're already set for next year. 
it's kind of weird the way it worked out with the way that the Hatbox chooses its seasons uh, is in, like, you know, the spring or close to the spring, like April, mm-hmm. March, April. Um, so you got to pitch around that area mm-hmm. of time. So we had so we had to pitch. I, we didn't. We still don't know how successful this one's going to be or how it's going to come off. But we have to, in case in the case that it's it really works out well, we want to do another one. I can't wait till after it to pitch the yeah. second one. So I pitched the second one before this one goes up. So you know, hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I I, I have a. I have a strong feeling it's gonna it's gonna. You're coming out of the great str- the gate strong. I mean, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. You know, we'll 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 see. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think? A couple of questions. What do you think will be the most difficult component? The writing or the staging or in your gut feeling? What do you think? If there's a mind, I think the most challenging component. It depends on what position you're talking about. I think. Because I think people in the position of, well, I'm a first-time writer or I'm a first-time director, that's going to be challenging. You, For everybody, I think the most challenging part will be dividing the time effectively or trying to divide the, the time effectively. Just time management itself. Time I mean. management yeah. will probably be... Uh, because even the actors have to memorize their lines. So there's... Um, you know, imagine they're going to have to... If they're not like some actors who can just read it once and then know them yeah. which is mo- most actors <laughs> which is not most actors they'll probably have to divide up some line memorizing time you know we know of one play that's going to have a dark day on friday mm-hmm. before the before the show you know that already we know that already because of the director's schedules okay and so that you know that would give the cast opportunities to just drill lines prep rest maybe a little bit before the show but I think the most challenging part will be time management. Would you, down the road, I, since you have this opening for next year, would you like to expand it at some point? If it works, is you, part of your desire to make it more inclusive, you know, have more people involved to make it a bigger uh, thing? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a feeling about that yet. I think, I think my, my mind is in a state of let's wait and see. Mm-hmm. like for a lot of for a lot of elements in this because it's even though i've done a lot of 24 hour plays i've never done a week one mm-hmm. and i don't know what necess- i don't necessarily know what to expect i don't think any of us do because i i've never heard of someone doing this as a week long thing before so this is very in a way it's experimental because we're going to find out a lot of like mary and i are going to find out a lot of um, things that work things that didn't work we are 90% sure we're going to ask people to fill out like a post-mortem questionnaire. But I, but I always say that like, you know, the biggest, the greatest test is the audience. So in terms of whether it's worth producing again, I think the audience will have a lot to, and it's not necessarily what they verbally say. It's what you feel like. I think the vibe you get from the audience, you know, mm-hmm. are yeah. you having any, numbers yet on on audience i i mean it's i know it's, yeah, i haven't uh, asked yet okay. uh, i haven't asked about pre-sales yet um so i'm i have no idea we just i mean we i don't think it's gonna be i don't think right at this point it's very large because we just started advertising for it and it's only one matinee it's a saturday matinee so it, it, we could sell, sell out i don't it's know it's a saturday matinees yeah yeah it's plural Oh, did I say S? No, but oh. there's like four plays, right? So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. 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 Absolutely. But they're strung together, so it, once one plays over, you really can't leave the theater without people seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The audience. So you and I had talked during what was it, Red Rabbit, White Rabbit, whatever that, and yep. you know the audience comes in blind there too, for the yep. most part. Yep. So are you thinking or hoping to get any kind of, uh, not a reaction, but you think the audience will be very understanding about what's taking place here? You know, this is, you're literally constructing something from nothing. From nothing. Seven days prior. Uh, So I'm hoping the audience will give you that leeway, you know, and not be so, this is a piece of crap, you know what I mean? Well, um, 
I hadn't thought too much about that. Um, I guess I'm asking, should we be bringing our parents so we can have a, an audience that loves us, regardless of what we do? <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh, I think I think my, my safety self wants to say, everyone bring their family and friends and everything and just treat it like a, a communal experience with, you know, people you know. But another part of me is like, I don't want to. I I don't think we should go in assuming that it's going to be that, that it's going to be rough or rough around the edges. I yeah. think we should go in with the people involved. I I find that hard to believe that it would be right. I, with with I think we should go in and make it the best possible play for a paying audience that we can make it or, mm-hmm. or experience for a play. And that's my attitude going in is I'm going to make it the best possible experience for audiences that are paying for their tickets and want to be entertained in their own right, regardless of who they know might know or be supporting. That's the attitude that I want to, that I would want to, even though the circumstances are very, very challenging there. I don't think you should, you know, like when you're walking a tightrope, I don't think you should necessarily walk it as if there's a nice pool underneath. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think you should. I think you should do it as if, as if you need to make this the best that you can make it. So I don't. I don't. I guess I don't really think of it in terms of like how the audience is going to react. The audience will react the way that they react. I'm hoping that they enjoy it for its own sake. So I guess that's that's what I'm hoping. But we'll see. Yeah, it, it's yeah. an interesting concept because. You, it's almost like a relay race where you, you're, they're handing off the baton along the way, right? So they get yep. handed the idea or whatever, the theme yep. or whatever. That Then it gets written. Then it gets handed yep. to the director. Then the director takes it and creates a show out of it. And the actors then take it and put it on stage and perform it yep. until the uh, race is done. It's pretty intensive. I mean, it, it is. Everyone who's working on it has my eternal gratitude, <laughs> including you, Ray. <laughs> uh it is a big one big old experiment well you lucked out i mean maybe not lucked but the the names of the people involved on all levels oh yeah i mean for example brian had a week of not doing anything he had like a week of not having any projects because he's just been he just did secret garden yeah he's doing another fundraiser actually the friday during uh rehearsal so that's gonna be their dark friday yeah uh and then he's I don't know. He's he's just doing everything. I know they are. Um, so I totally. I didn't expect. I didn't expect he'd say yes. I was like, he's probably got projects up the waz. Like wow, but this week just happened to fit into his. It was like a miracle. I don't like you know. I'm very very grateful for. It's just the people we were able to, and including yourself, it's the people we were able to to get on board. What do you think's the biggest pitfall here? What what are people going to have to watch out for along the way? That's an awesome question, by the way. That is like. A really good question. I think I think the pit I think a pitfall would be relying on the fact that it's allowing yourself to to do less than your best because you know the audience is gonna is more likely to forgive you. I would say that's a pitfall. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean that's really the only one you know, the advantage to only having one week is it's not a big time commitment. <laughs> <laughs> People can go about their lives and they have this one week and they can go about their lives again, you know. In the big frame and the big picture of things, it is just yeah. a speck of time. I mean, it's not really much yeah. of anything. And it's May, so a lot of and us are May. in between yeah. things. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next year's is going to be the end of April, so I might not be able to score as many people. We'll see. But I, I usually trying to start solicit people early, and there was a whole list of people that I was that I just after I said no, nope, I'm going to stop soliciting. That I still want, so we'll see. Yeah, you know the um, the 48 hour film festivals. I did I didn't do the 24 hour play, but the 48 hour film festivals, they're a hoot. I mean, oh, yeah. They're really a lot of fun. You know, that that pressure, there's something about that. that there's something about the pressure that brings out the best in you. That fire, once they light that firecracker and you're off That's and running. An age-old truism. Ooh, man, oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Well, yeah. I can't wait. I'm really excited. I'm it's really going to be excited. so much fun. I'm so glad you're doing it, Ray. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad you asked. I mean, oh, and again, it worked out. Uh, yeah. You know, I got something coming up in June, and <laughs> <laughs> it. but the time worked out great. Wow. 
It's really good. Got to be a sign, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank sign. you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, My pleasure. I'm going to try to get it edited, but you know I'm getting old, so... Whatever. In between my applesauce and my jello, I'm going to try <laughs> to get it done and see if yeah, I can. And you, plus, you'll be rehearsing next week. so Yes, I will. But it will only be for an hour and 40. That's why I started talking about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it will, I was wanted to comfort you in that it will only be an hour and 45 minutes of rehearsal. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I'm okay with that. I, I've already warned my wife. I'll yeah, give okay. me a week. I'm out of the house. I mean, it's happy. better than a tech week because tech weeks, you're there like all night, you know? Yeah. Basically, so I don't mind a two-hour rehearsal. I really don't. I mean, for most of us, that's a, sh- a walk in the park. I know, I know. <laughs> and it's just one of week, course. So. Only two hours, if you look at it the other way, is not a lot of time either. You know? No, no, no. So, okay. Well, yeah. my friend, thank you again. I appreciate Absolutely. it. They, the posters <laughs> came out great. They look wonderful. By the way, yeah, Michael Domini did those. He I did. Tried to, yes. Man, you know the Dominies are on a streak. They're they're, they're pretty hot. Yeah, <laughs> like in terms of the the play world, and but Michael's always been. He did, you know, he he uh, designed the QCI logo uh, for did? Queens Improv, the one that the improv troupe that I'm doing. I didn't know he had that Over, kind of background or expertise. Yes, so uh, I don't know if you have ever seen that logo. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. He designed that. He, he man, designed. it's a good yeah. thing he didn't ask me because. <laughs> I can tell you well, exactly. What he was actually in the troop for like a week. He had to, you know, he had other commitments that he had to to attend to. But for that one week, he was actually a troop member. You know, so that was cool. <laughs> Worked for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so. buddy. I won't take up any more of your time. And there you go, another great one in the tank. That one's going off to the memorial. Have a great day.